We now learn how to construct probability distribution tables as well as how to draw bar charts for discrete random variables. Now as a starting point, let's just say we're dealing with a discrete random variable, which I'll call capital X, and I'll just write discrete random variable. And let's say that this discrete random variable can take on either of the values inside the set 2, 3, 4, and 5. And finally, we're told that this discrete random variable, capital X, has a probability distribution function defined as the probability that capital X equals to lowercase x equals to x over 14, where that x is the lowercase x. Okay, let's start by learning how to construct a probability distribution table. Okay. Well, to do this, our table consists of two rows. So I'll just draw a little line there. Now, on the top row, we show all the values that the discrete random variable can take. So in this case, those would be 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we refer to all of those values with the lowercase x. So we just write lowercase x here and the values 2, 3, 4, and 5. Done. I'll just add some columns here. Now in the second row, we need to write all of the corresponding probabilities. Those are the probabilities that the discrete random variable equals to either of those values. So that would look like this, the probability that capital X equals to lowercase x, and we now need to complete this. Now to complete the second row, we simply need to calculate the probability that say x equals to 2, x equals to 3, x equals to 4, and x equals to 5. So let's go ahead and do that. We start, the probability that capital X equals to 2 is equal to, well to calculate that, all we need to do is replace all of the x's we see inside the probability distribution function by 2. So that would be 2 over 14. And we add that to our table. Done. We do the same thing for x equals to 3, and that would be the probability that capital X equals to 3 equals to 3 over 14. We add that to the table. We do the same for probability that capital X equals to 4, which would be 4 over 14. And we add that to our table, 4 over 14. And finally, the probability that the discrete random variable equals to 5, which would be 5 over 14, which we add to the table. Done. And that, in fact, is our probability distribution table done. That's all it is. Now, tables like this can be very useful because at a very quick glance, we can see all of the probabilities associated to the discrete random variable. So, for instance, just looking at this, we can see that the value that the discrete random variable is most likely to take on is 5, since that's the highest probability of 5 over 14. And often, rather than being given the probability distribution function, we'll just be given this table. And this table is sometimes loosely called the probability distribution because it has all the information we could possibly obtain from the probability distribution function. Now that we've seen how to construct the probability distribution table, let's move on to see how to illustrate this with a probability distribution bar chart. To construct a probability distribution bar chart, all the information we need is actually summarized inside this probability distribution table. Now on the horizontal axis, we're going to represent all the possible values that the discrete random variable can take. So those would be 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the vertical axis will show all the corresponding probabilities. So let's go ahead and do that. So we draw a vertical axis and a horizontal axis like so. And Remember, the horizontal axis are all the possible values the discrete random variable can take, so we'll just call those lowercase x. The vertical axis is the probability that the discrete random variable capital X equals to either of those values, lowercase x. Now we can see that the discrete random variable can take on the values 2, 3, 4, and 5, so we add those to our horizontal axis. That's 2, 3, 4, and 5. And now we draw the corresponding bars whose heights are equal to the corresponding probabilities. So the probability that x equals to 2 was 2 over 14. So I'll just draw a bar looking like this. 
and we'll say the height is 2 over 14. The probability that the discrete random variable equals to 3 is 3 over 14. So we draw a bar going up to 3 over 14. And we add that here, 3 over 14. The same for the probability that x equals to 4. That was 4 over 14. So we draw the bar going up to 4 over 14, like so. And finally, the probability that the discrete random variable equals to 5 was 5 over 14, so we draw that bar as well, like so. And we add the 5 over 14 on the vertical axis. And there we have it. We've just drawn this probability distribution's bar chart. And we could go ahead and shade the bars if needs be. Now, I will point out something rather important here. None of these bars touch. In other words, we can see that each of these bars is quite clearly separated from the next one. Now, this actually highlights something quite important. It highlights the fact that we're working with discrete variables. If we were working with continuous random variables or continuous variables, then these bars would touch. And that's actually quite an important distinction to make. So if you're working with discrete random variables, make sure that your bars on the bar chart do not touch. Now, the way to actually use a bar chart like the one we see here is simply to quickly be able to tell which of the values of the discrete random variable is most likely to occur. Looking at this, we can see right away that the bar which is highest corresponds to a discrete random variable value of 5. So we can see that the discrete random variable is most likely to equal to 5. Similarly, we can also quickly tell which is the least likely to occur. We simply look for the bar which is the lowest, and in this case we can see that corresponds to a value of 2. And that becomes particularly useful when the discrete random variable can take on loads of values. We can quickly see which values are most likely to occur. Okay, now that we know the basics, let's go ahead and work through a typical quiz type question. We're told that a game of chance consists of picking at random a ball from a bag. Each ball is numbered either 2, 4, or 6, and the discrete random variable is defined as capital X, the number obtained when we pick a ball from the bag. We're then told that the probability distribution function associated to the discrete random variable is the probability that the discrete random variable equals to X is equal to 8x minus x squared over 40. We're then asked to do three things. The first is to construct a probability distribution table to illustrate this distribution. The second is to draw a bar chart to illustrate this probability distribution. And finally, the third, we're asked to use this distribution table and bar chart to determine which value the discrete random variable x is most likely to take. Okay, so let's do that. The first thing I'll do is I'll just move this to the right-hand side, and I'll shrink a little bit to have enough space. There we go. Okay, so to answer the first question, question one, we need to construct a probability distribution table. And the first thing to pick up on here is the values that the discrete random variable can actually take. That's given to us in the question here. We know that it can equal to either 2, 4, or 6. So let's go ahead and make a two-row table, and on the top row we'll have the values that the discrete random variable can take. Those were 2, 4, or 6. Now, on the second row, we're going to add the probabilities that the discrete random variable take on each of these values. So that would be the probability that capital X equals to X. Now, to actually calculate the probabilities, we need the probability distribution function that was given to us in the question. I'll just copy it over here. That was the probability that capital X equals to X is equal to 8X minus X squared over 40. Done. So, now we get started to complete this table. We need to calculate the probability that X equals to 2. To do that, all we need to do is replace x by 2 inside this probability distribution function and calculate. So that would be the probability that capital X equals to 2 is equal to 8 times 2 minus 2 squared over 40. That's equal to 16 minus 4 over 40, and that's equal to 12 over 40. 
we add that to our table right here, 12 over 40. We now need to calculate the probability that x equals to 4. And to do that, we simply replace x inside the probability distribution function by 4. So that would be the probability that capital X equals to 4 is equal to 8 times 4 minus 4 squared over 40. That's equal to 32 minus 16 over 40, which equals to 16 over 40. So we add that to the table, 16 over 40. Finally, we need to calculate the probability that the discrete random variable equals to 6, and once more we do this by replacing the x inside the distribution function by 6. So that would be the probability that capital X equals to 6 is equal to 8 times 6 minus 6 squared over 40, that's equal to 48 minus 36 over 40, and that's equal to 12 over 40. So we add that to our table, 12 over 40. Done. We've now constructed the probability distribution table for this distribution. We move on to question two, and in question two we need to draw a bar chart to illustrate this distribution. So I'll just do that on the right-hand side here. I'll write two. Remember, for the bar chart we need two axes, a vertical axis and a horizontal one. And on the horizontal axis, we show all the possible values the discrete random variable can take. So 2, 4, and 6. So let's just go ahead. This would be x, and we would have 2, 4, and 6. Now on the vertical axis, we represent the probabilities that the discrete random variable equals to any of those values of x. And we now draw the bars. So we know that the probability that x equals to 2 is 12 over 40. So we go ahead and draw a bar going up to 12 over 40, which we'll say is that. And its height is 12 over 40. We also know that the probability that x equals to 4 is 16 over 40. So we go ahead and draw that bar looking something like this, 16 over 40. Okay, and finally we know that the probability that the discrete random variable equals to 6 is 12 over 40 again. So that's going to be another bar going up to the same height as the first one, so something like that. And we're done. We've just constructed the bar chart for this probability distribution. Notice that each of these bars is separated from the previous and the next to highlight the fact that we're working with discrete random variables. Finally, we move on to question 3. And in question three, we need to use the distribution table and the bar chart to determine which value the discrete random variable capital X is most likely to take. Well, in this case, we have a choice, really. If we were to use the table, we can see that the value it is most likely to take is four, because that is the value with the highest probability. On the other hand, we can also see, using the bar chart, that the bar that goes highest corresponds to four. So we can go ahead and state that the value that capital X is most likely to take is 4. So I'll just go ahead and write capital X equals to 4. And we're done. And so now we know how to construct probability distribution tables as well as how to illustrate those using probability distribution bar charts. There we go, everyone. I really hope that helped. And if it did, please hit like on this video and even subscribe to our channel because that really does help us. And if you're watching this on our website, make sure to work through the exercise further down the page with answer keys and detailed video solutions to each and every single question. See you soon.